In this module, we're going to talk about how to generate sinusoids from within the FPGA. We do that through a technique called direct digital synthesis, which is also known as a numerically controlled oscillator. And you can think of it as an di all digital version of an analog oscillator. We have choices when we build these things. The prevalent one is a lookup table approach. And when we build a, uh, a DDS with a lookup table, we have some additional choices. We can do a simple phase truncation. We have a technique called dithering. Uh, proprietary design is a technique called Tyler, Taylor series expansion. And another way of building these things is with a, a technique called a cortic, which is going to be covered in the cortic module, also available on this website. So where do we find DDSs? Well, I would say they're most commonly found in digital communications applications where we need to do up and down conversion or maybe some kind of carrier synchronization, like in a phase lock loop of some sort. But hey, anywhere where a digital oscillator is required. So in our generic digital communications channel shown here, digital up and digital down conversion or frequency translation is where we find these things. But again, like I said earlier, carrier sync is common as well. A lookup table DDS is simply just that. We use a lookup table, typically implemented with a block RAM. And in that block RAM, we save sampled values of a sinusoid. Those sampled values will have will be m bits wide, and we address those values through um, uh, through an address, which is also uh, which is n bits wide, and that address is generated by an, what's called a phase accumulator, and the stride through the table. Um, is set by the accumulator or set by the phase step size into the accumulator, which determines the output frequency. So as a very simple example, when we, uh, if we had a, uh, a phase word of 1, we would be uh, hitting every value in the table, which would give us a very oversampled sine wave. If we just simply increase that to do, to two, we would be hitting every other sample in the, in the lookup table, and which would uh, increase the sinusoid frequency by two on the output. The phase word mu is controlled by the table size or the, um, the frequency that we desire divided by the sampling frequency and then the table step size. So let's take a look at, so the way we stride through this table is with the accumulator. And we see here a basic block diagram of an accumulator. Note that um, the value mu is defined as having n integer bits and b fractional bits. But the fractional bits get quantized away. So what is the value of those fractional bits? We need to have, a, uh, they get quantized away, of course, because we need to, uh, we can't address a lookup table with fractional values. It has to be an integer value. Okay, so increasing B provides greater frequency precision. Let's see how that works in an example. In this case, uh, we're going to pick uh, a f desired frequency of 61.44 megahertz, which is a, a common value in, in UMTS and digital communications. Uh, our table size is going to be 1K, which means we have 10 bits, and we're sampling at 300 megahertz, which is a, a comfortable frequency from most FPGAs. So um, given these values, what should our step size be? Well, turning the crank on the equation, we see we've got uh, 209.7, okay? And if we say, all right, if we reverse the equation, say given that step size, what will it be? You know, after the quantization, what will be our desired frequency? We see we have 61.23, which is close, but maybe not good enough for our application. It's certainly not 61.44. If we uh, round up instead of down and use 210, uh, we still come close, but on the high side at 61.5. Well, what happens if we add uh, some fractional, if we maintain this um, 
this fractional part. So if we add six fractional bits to the um, to the accumulator, we see we can we can um, achieve a 209.71875, which results in a frequency of 61.44 megahertz. So by adding those fractional bits, we are able to um, improve our frequency precision. So getting back to our lookup table, um, we can see from the previous example that that the bit width, the accumulator bit width affects the frequency resolution, uh, but what happens to the phase after we quantize away? So this quantization does not come without some cost. Here's what happens to phase when we truncate. We see in red uh, the the output of the of the phase accumulator, but that gets truncated away, and by uh, truncation by truncating, we cause this irregular sampling. Um, we create basically side tones by um, by uh, truncating the fractional values away, and we can see that here in this plot where uh, we have a desired tone, but after truncation, we get these spurs or these side tones. Um, which are uh, called spurs, and we have we have a measure of goodness then for the performance of a DDS. We call it spurious free dynamic range, and it's quite simply the dynamic range between um, our frequency of interest and the next largest side tone or spur. Spurious free dynamic range. Okay, so how do we improve our 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 DDS performance? Well. We have lots of choices. You know, the accumulator size can be uh, twiddled with. Um, bigger accumulator, as we saw, increases the frequency resolution. But then, large accumulators mean large adders. Uh, the LUT size, uh, the lookup table size, that is, can be made larger. Um, but then that uh, equates to more memory. And of course, we can also increase we can increase the output bit width, but to some point that also increases our memory requirement so what do we want to do so again uh, increasing LUT size it, uh, will work but it's costly but there's another choice um, we can dither the phase word so um, those tones are caused by uh, basically by truncating the phase word away we, we, we cause a modulation if you will we create these side tones, and we can get rid of that that modulation or side tone by simply randomizing, adding some some noise to the phase word. And um, how much improvement can we get? Well, we can get actually uh, a two bits worth. Um, Sperry, we can improve the Sperry's free dynamic range by 12 dB. So where do we add that noise? Well, seen here, we add the noise to the output of the accumulator, and then the question is, well, how much noise do we want to add? Well, and for that, uh, let's take a look at um, a DDS in motion, if you will. Here is a Simulink diagram with system generator blocks in it. If we take a look at what we've got built here, let's window in, start at the front. We see we have some constant holding our uh, phase step, our mu. And we've represented that with 16 bits total, where the binary point is uh, at 6. So we have 6 fractional bits going into this accumulator, 6, 6, um, 16.6 .6 coming out. And then um, we have actually 3 or 4 branches here. Let's take a look. Let me zoom out again. So. Uh, what we have here is four branches. The top branch, um, there's, we have a noise generator here. Okay, the top branch receives no noise, so that's undithered. The next branch receives uh, some amount of noise. Let's look and see what we can see here. Uh, so the second branch receives six fraction, six bits of noise. Uh, next one down receives um, eight bits of noise. And uh, finally, um, the next one receives uh, three bits of noise. So um, 
let's see uh, what happens. Hit the run button. And the question is, how much noise is just enough? Okay, so we can see here that the truncated DDS, here's our frequency of interest at 61.44, and we can see th that we have 10 bits that, uh, um, that are going into this lookup table, and we can take a look from this guy to this guy and see that that's about 60 dB, which is actually what we expect in, um, you know, because our we can, you know, the number of bits, dynamic range is related to the number of bits uh, as 6 dB per bit, and uh, that's basically what we're getting here. Now, if we add noise to the phase word, which is what we're showing here, and in this case, the amount of noise we're adding is uh, D equals B, we have, which means we're adding six bits of noise. We've suppressed these spurs at the, uh, but, but at the expense of our noise floor slightly coming up, but that's not such a very bad thing because we've now got 72 dB of, of Sperry's free dynamic range. And we have a side benefit by getting rid of these, these side tones, if we will, these spurs. These things could cause some, some intermodulation. Recall that most of the time we're using these DDSs as a local oscillator for up and down conversion. And having these side tones in there are going to create some intermodulation that's very undesired. So randomizing, it, whitening it, if you will, is a very desired effect. Over here, we said, well, if, if six bits are good, maybe more is better. And the answer is actually no. When we add more than the number of fractional bits, the noise floor comes up too much. In this case, we've added eight bits of noise. And we're back to having the original 60 dB. Of, of performance. Well, what about the other direction? If we add less than um, the number of uh, fractional bits? Well, now here we, we have a slight rise in the noise floor, but we haven't gotten rid of all our spurs. So this D equals B, that is the number of noise bits equal to the number of fractional bits, seems to be the sweet spot. Thanks for watching.